Perfect. And he said it's about six hours. Up if he's still awake. Uh, yeah, yeah, six hours. Yeah. Okay. And then yeah. you just pull a boat. Yeah, yeah I'll I be guess. pulling my own boat. Yeah. Oh, that's perfect. So this should be a big adventure. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah. Cool. Really oh yeah. What? Oh, it's here. The day is here. <laughs> Little wildlife. Mm, yeah. Muskies. We're north of the border again in beautiful sunset country in northwest Ontario. And this time on an adventure I've been waiting for since I've been old enough to cast. We're on giant Lac Sewell. It's a maze of water full of giant fish. As a matter of fact, this is the second largest lake in all of Ontario. And that's a bold statement. First things first, we need to catch dinner and that means walleye. And one of the best ways to start the fish finding process is to put on a bottom bouncer and a rapala and get to work. Yeah, this is a pretty good one here. Nice, nettable? Uh, yeah, this is like a four pounder. And a boy. I think. Nice walleye. Yeah. Perfect. That's what you're coming up here for. Batch Whoa. of those. Come here, buddy. Oh, no, oh, no, no, no. In the what? <laughs> Rolling in the net? No, he'll, we'll get him out of there pretty quick. You know, you come up on a trip like this, you gotta have some type of technique to uh, cover water. And one of our absolute favorite techniques is bottom bouncing. And there's a, sort of a reason for it is the, the fact that it's really an easy technique to cover quite a bit of water, deeper water, quickly in fine fish. And there's a number of different baits you could uh, pull behind bottom bouncers. And right now we're using one of our favorites, the classic Rapala. Just pulling a rapala behind a bottom bouncer, pulling slow over these big, great big flats. You know, Lac Sewell, this is a, just a monstrous body of water. It's really big. Like so many of these big Canadian lakes, Lac Sewell has uh, tremendous uh, shelves, big food shelves. Right now we're up here and it's the middle of September and a lot of these fish have, are starting to drain off and get out on these great big uh, main lake structures out in deeper water and there's a tremendous gathering of numbers of fish. But the thing is, is a lot of these spots are really big and that's where this bottom bouncing technique can be really critical to help find and catch fish. Oh boy, look at that there. I know. Wow. Cool. There's one. Good one? There go. Uh, it feels better, yeah, it does. This is amazing. I mean, this spot is so big, it'd take a long time to go through and jig the darn thing. It just is dynamite. I can just grab him, Jim. He's not huge, but okay. we'll be having a few like this for dinner up here, too. That is one of the, of course, the great treats of coming to Canada. It's catching walleyes for dinner. This lake is just loaded with walleyes. It's an amazing fishery. It's huge. It's got tons of habitat for a lot of different fish. And I caught that one on maybe one of the most classic baits of all time, the original floating rapala. This is something both in the spring and fall that you never want to go walleye fishing without. Of course, you can cast it. Low light periods or if the fish are shallow, it works great, but it's just that subtle roll that the original floating rapala has that can just drive walleyes absolutely nuts. A really efficient tool for covering water. All right, back down. And the other thing that we're doing here too, I'll mention is, uh, of course we're fishing with bottom bouncers, but we're fishing with really heavy bouncers. We're fishing anywhere from about 13 feet all the way out to as deep as about 30. And we're using a three ounce bouncer. Now you might think that that's a really heavy bouncer, of course, when you're in the teens, but it's a lot easier to have good boat control if you've got something heavy and we can stay real vertical so we can weave in and out of these sharper breaks, just reel up some line and fish real vertical on the flat. So I prefer up here going heavier rather than lighter just to keep good control on the bait as opposed to uh, having a lot of line out with the lighter lead on your bouncer. So there it is, 3OZ. There's working, one. but it's slow. Got that one. Yeah, one. There we go. There you go. Nice. Boy, we saw so many of them there. It was yeah. like somebody's got to hook up. Original floaters producing. Can't tell the size yet. I don't think it's real big. Nope. Another oh. shore luncher. Oh. 
There we go. We had one of the biggest, well, the biggest cold front of the year just came through. Isn't that the classic thing mm -hmm. happened to you and been planning a trip all summer, you know, all season long? This is, I've never been to Laxul, one of my dream destinations, and we're finally here. And of course, yesterday, the day we arrived and took the houseboat north, we had gusts to 40 miles an hour. The temps were in the 40s. We'd had 80s a week before. It's mid-September, so it's that first cool down, and the water now is in the um, in the high 50s. So we're getting real close to that turnover, and there's a lot of fish just scattered about. So this is, you know, and there's so much water to look at that this is such a good game plan. We'll get on to muskies later, but we wanted just based on the weather. We wanted to see what we could do with the walleyes because we know it's such a phenomenal walleye fishery. And so far, it's been pretty darn good based on the conditions. 